Monjan is known to be an abstract painter, but he could not have reached that endpoint without his humble beginnings of realistic Dutch landscapes, his homeland. He sought ways to compose his paintings in a geometric and mathematical manner. His works are painted flatly, yet his choice of tone adds atmospheric perspective to create a sense of space. The windmills, the flat horizons, and the tall vertical trees also added to the stark geometrical lines in his composition, a means to display the dynamics of man and nature. What's interesting is how these compositional styles continue to appear as he evolved through the luminous and cubist style. His irregular trees, which used to emphasize on the structural integrity of the branches, gave way to the focus on negative spaces treated like globules of light and color. Observation of reality is slowly abandoned for an image of mystical enlightenment, where he unveiled the spiritual that exists in the same space as the material world. Through his representations of cityscapes, seascapes, and landscapes, he searched for abstract ways to represent the invisible forces of the world, the vitality of cityscapes, the dynamic opposition of man and nature, and the unifying cosmic forces of the world. The late 19th century was known to be the dawn of machinery and materialism, but as humanity moved from natural environments to cities, there was a stronger desire for spiritual fulfillment. This sparked a rising interest in theosophical studies such as Rudolf Steiner and mystic Madame Blavatsky, who sought to understand the world through a synthetic study of religions such as Christianity and Buddhism. Theosophy sought ways to understand the world and place mankind within it. It envisaged a divine motivating force pervading the entire universe. It believed that humanity can only evolve to achieve divine potential if they increase their spiritual awareness and development. Mondrian, an avid follower of theosophy, used art to reflect the underlying spirituality of nature. But they can only be felt or seen through cosmic consciousness. So Mondrian tried to represent them by using luminous aura of colors, which are manifestations of higher spheres of existence. He repeatedly painted trees to capture their ability to balance the energies of air, light, water, and earth. He painted reality and its reflections in the water. He flattened branches and negative spaces in between so that matter and space becomes one. Mondrian's evolution towards abstraction was spiritual, yet he also experimented with techniques from art movements that were rising in the early 20th century. Fauvism resonated with Mondrian for the redefinition of pure colour and form as a means of communicating the artist's emotional state. Luminism taught him to evoke a quiet spirituality through the observation of radiant light. Its use of slight tonal modulations and horizontal expanse with little brushwork gave the scene a silent sense of orderliness. Symbolism believed that art should represent absolute truth by portraying subject matter in an indirect manner, such as using metaphors. This explains Mondrian's choices of trees and windmills to capture the harnessing of energies, or the tall churches to symbolize the unity of heaven and earth. Pointillism allowed Mondrian to capture the rhythmic interplay of light and water through the vibrancy of colors placed side by side. Cubism's pursuit to break linear perspective by the flattening of line, shape, and form gave Mondrian clarity in depicting rhythm as the underlying structure behind the surfaces of reality. Through these influences, he moved away from mimicking reality because he had found a schematized framework to represent the hidden dynamic cosmic forces. Netherlands was a neutral country during World War I, but Dutch artists like Mondrian came together to respond to the horrors of war by envisioning a better world through art. Together with Theo van der Berg, they created the Steel, an art movement with an evangelical purpose for social and spiritual redemption. This is achieved through the creation of a universal visual language that reveals the laws governing the harmony of the world. An art form that envisions a utopian world, unifies different cultures, transcends geopolitical and cultural boundaries, and purifies mankind of its evil individualistic greed and desires that sparked modernity and the horrors of war. This visual language is seen in Mondrian's mutual works. By now, he relied on basic forms and primary colours composed in an asymmetrically balanced manner to achieve a harmonious dynamic equilibrium reflecting the cosmic structures and forces of the world. By distilling the real world into its pure essence, he can truly create art that transcends all individuals and promotes one united humanity. Till today, this style has had many influences around the world, especially in architecture which gave rise to the international style. Mondrian's mature style requires a lot of planning due to his ambition to create dynamic equilibrium through asymmetrically balanced compositions, made up of lines and geometric shapes of primary colours, black and white, all in the spirit of his distilled ideas. He would use long thin strips of transparent paper around the canvas to position the lines before drawing the lines with charcoal and ruler. The sizes and positions of the elements were frequently changed intuitively. Once the design was complete, black lines were painted first, followed by white and the primary colours using thick paint applied flatly on the canvas. A lot of effort is placed in finalizing the design, as lines can continuously be adjusted, added, or removed to achieve dynamic balance. Note how he attempts to remove any remnants of brushwork by painting the colors as flatly as possible, as he intends to remove the artist's touch in order to achieve an image that is associated with the universal rather than the individual. This technique continued even when his style changed in New York, where pulses of red and blue littered across each line of yellow. These techniques resulted in what Mondrian calls neoplasticism or new art.
The combination of its aesthetic and spiritual pursuits led to a visual language that can be decoded. Vertical and horizontal lines represent dualities of opposing forces constantly shifting to achieve balance. Man and woman, forest and seas, vitality and tranquility, spirit and matter. Inspired by Christosophy, a study of mystical and mathematical concepts, Mondran revealed how the opposing forces led to the creation of the universe. Colors are kept to their pure primary hues, for they too hold spiritual meaning. Yellow expands, like the outward movement of rays, while firmament blue recedes. Red, the human body, lays in between as it reconciles the opposition of yellow, man's intellect, and blue, the spirit. Together, they form the base of all colourful creations. Shapes are important too. The cosmic egg, eternity, the world as a united balance of opposing forces, matter and its reflection, or two triangles pointing to matter and spirit combined to form the square of the world. Together, these lines, shapes, and colours are composed in dynamic equilibrium, repeated to create rhythmic movement, reflecting the vitality of evolution in the universe.